it's an explosive. It's, you know, it's dangerous. And there's all that bang and colour. It's not a thing that you can take home with you. You're creating a memory, you're creating an experience. And it's only there for a fleeting few minutes, but you know, what you take away in the memories could last forever. The way that just brings everybody together. We're a little bit of a storyteller, we're a little bit of a magician, um, we're a little bit of an artist. A good display leaves people on a high. Every year, the Surfers Paradise Festival brings tourists and locals together. The street and the beach come alive. For the second year running, the festival is hosting a fireworks competition. Three of the best pyros in the business will go against each other to light up the sky. This year, the teams hit a stumbling block. A convoy of council vehicles cruises the coastline, inspecting beaches which have become construction sites where workers battle to fix what's been described as the worst erosion in 40 years. The tourism capital's image has also copped a battering ahead of the all-important Easter break. So I think all the 19 shots, they can go on pallets straight up because that doesn't yep. matter. But anything fan can keep on separate pallets yep. so we can skew them at the end of the day. Yeah. If, if it, does it, try if it get... starts to spin, we just have, everyone has a pallet that can move, Spinner. an operator can just move. Yep. The Spectrum Fireworks has been around for 17 years now. Um, so we do virtually everything from school fates through to uh, massive New Year's Eves. Each competitor has to come up with a, a firework display between 8 and 10 minutes long. They've got to supply a, a soundtrack that is actually obviously going to work well with the fireworks. Um, and then they've also got a budget they sort of have to work into. Well, I'm Paul Ginotti from All Fired Up Fireworks. Uh, we're based in Brisbane. We've uh, been going for about 15 years now, doing uh, all sorts of different things. Uh, just come back from the Kiss Motley Crew tour of Queensland. We're doing this event because uh, it's uh, a good opportunity to showcase what we can what we can do and um, we get to pick our own soundtrack too so it's a bit like a painter we've all got the same colors and everything it's just the way we put it together artistically oh, well skylight of fireworks do a range of things we do fireworks displays we wholesale fireworks to display companies around australia and we also have uh, retail fireworks in shops once a year up in the northern territory you've got three great fireworks companies all fighting it out to try and impress and one-up each other so it's a great opportunity not just to see one fireworks display, but three fireworks displays where we're really pushing the envelope. We sort of all help each other out, you know, like uh, occasionally. And, uh, but, you know, deep down, I suppose it's like playing sport, you know, like you're friends with your opposition after the game. You go and have a drink with them or whatever, or just talk to them. But when it's on, it's on. Due to beach erosion, the guys will not be able to ignite the fireworks from the beach. Instead, they'll have to put the fireworks on barges. They will then tow the barges into position off the beach break. This is a risky venture and something they haven't attempted before. So we're around about 30 days out from the event now. It's getting pretty close. This meeting today is for all the stakeholders involved. So we've got the police, the Department of Mines and Energy, uh, Council, Virtually anybody who's anybody here for this meeting. The, uh, the big guns have come down from Brisbane for this meeting from the Department of Mines and Energy. The guy we've got here today, Martin Land, he's the, the principal inspector of explosives. So um, they want to make sure that this is done right. OK, we're here to discuss Seafire, which is part of the Surface Paradise Festival. Event statistics from last year, as I mentioned earlier, we had 20 to 25,000 plus people down there. It's on that finale weekend of the festival, so the expectation would be, um, you know, it's that 30, 30 plus. Are we working on a plan B around the potential of using the beach as a as a launch? No. Or it's, it, that, that is, that's no, not... It's just, it's just physically impossible. Um, even if you had still conditions, no wind, no, you know, there still wouldn't be enough rough room. The way that we're going with the barges, it's a lot easier on everybody, like mm. spectators can spread out. And um, yeah, it just makes it, it's a lot safer. Mm. 
We've got a shoot bigger fireworks, yeah. so there's a lot of new effects we can now integrate. If, if the surf conditions were to change, yep. um, you know, where do we go with that? That plan would We'd have a really good indication probably two to three days out what the predicted swell would be. Very worst scenario, maybe sort of going the weekend after or the weekend after that. Because the um, uh, weather's washed away the uh, beaches, the large seas from all the um, inclement weather we've had, uh, they've decided to put these out on the barges, which makes the um, control of exclusion zone much easier but then you've got other issues in relation to the wind and also the tides and also the swells. Well, we look at the public safety side of it here to ensure that um, exclusion zones are met, the contractors are licensed and that um, uh, the safety management systems in, in on place to ensure safety to the public. The event organisers are worried that the barges will be too far out for the audience to enjoy the displays. Chris is determined to prove that the competition will be a success. I sort of had a bit of a vibe from one of the guys from Surface, uh, Surface Paris Alliance, that he was just always pushing this angle of, you know, can we do it on the beach? You know, is it possible? Uh, is, uh, is there a chance the sand might come back in the next sort of three weeks that we can do it on the beach? For a normal display, we'd probably need like a 65 metre radius from around our display site. At the moment, we'd be lucky to get 35 metres to the road let alone the, the full safety distance that we need. So it's just impossible, you just cannot do it. So we've had to use, you know, this is why we're here today, sort of to try out the barge. I just want to sort of like show the guys at surface so they can really sort of put them at ease, and it will put me at ease as well, um, that it's just sort of, it'll work the way that we want it to work. In a few weeks' time, three fireworks companies will compete against each other in a rare pyrotechnics display at Surfers Paradise. Due to widespread beach erosion, they'll have to take the fireworks out to sea on barges. Tonight, Chris is going to have a practice run to prove to himself and the event organisers that this is possible. Chris has just gone off to get the barge for us and bring it over so we can load it up. We'll spend a couple hours here loading everything onto the barge and then we'll um, get it all ready and head off out the front of surface. Most barges we do we're sitting in still water and we're not out the front of surface there in the, in the waves so it's, it's a little bit different and all the time like we do displays on surface it's normally on the beach. Right, today what we're doing is coming down to virtually just do a test run. Um, we want to see what, you know, what the display will look like. Um, this is pretty much new to us as well, firing from the, from the water or from the, from the ocean. This is just a snapshot of what we've got on competition night. We've just got three minutes here compared to a 30 minute show that we're doing for, for the actual competition. Three fireworks companies, two barges, massive fireworks, just be an absolute wicked display. Hello. Okay, so you were firing at seven, weren't you? Okay, we, we might have, if you can just sort of, I sort of thought I had it in for, um, yeah, for around that sort of seven, ten pass, that's what we were doing all our timings on. Okay, I'll, yeah, yep, yep, I'll. Okay, no worries, see ya. Uh, yeah, Nick, you got a copy? Copy, Chris. Yeah, just let you know the uh, timing on that one's changed to uh, about 20 past six, half past six at the moment. How's all that travel there at the moment? Yeah, just not real happy with the fillers, but I'll retest it. Yeah, roger that. So, yeah, we've got about uh, half an hour till fire time, so we're sort of really up against it at the moment, so everything sort of is 
is sort of on track, but you know we would have liked a little bit more time up our sleeve um, to things beyond uh, our control. They said they've probably got around about 10 to 15 minutes before uh, the parade gets here, so that'll be good. So yeah, if you just want to keep heading south, at the moment you're about 400 metres offshore. I'd try I'd like to get you about 250 metres off. See, so you're still 400 metres offshore at the moment, so if you can keep heading south, and then um, we can throw out as much anchor as we can. If you can, let it drift a little bit in towards the breakers. If you, if you can, that would be good. Hey, Nick, can you turn everything on there? Just also, too, whilst you're waiting. I don't know if you get a chance, but the, the, the parade's getting very close. I need a verbal countdown from you. It ticked all of our boxes as far as the safety. The, the show was like excellent. Everyone loved it. So from our front, yeah, awesome job. The water shelf, but some for some reason the reds, the reds just travelled a lot further. Exactly the same rack, exactly the same angle. Yeah, I guess there might have been a bit of sideways pitch, but then they would have both. They would have both. It was the yeah, one. Yeah, they did. So. so whether whether we, but if we know the silvers are doing that, if we know the silvers are travelling to what they're supposed to do and, and launching where they're supposed to, where the reds are going too but far. Also, sometimes those water shells, because they're laying so flat, after a long journey, maybe we just need to stoke them all, all the tubes, and just Make check. Sure they're right at the bottom. Just of check the... that they're sitting right at the bottom. But yeah, I mean, they, they the still got good projection, so I think they were. Well, what we did is when we laid them down, we watered them as well, because what we were worried yeah. about is the first one going off, yep. and then obviously that that next shell just falling out into the water beside there. Yeah, we're just yeah stoked. Yeah, that's exactly how we wanted it. Uh, if we can replicate that for the um, upcoming uh, competition, it's just going to be absolutely great. But all in for what we had to do tonight was test how it looked from the and from the crowd's response too. It was yeah, it was a winner. In a few weeks' time, three of the biggest names in fireworks in Queensland will compete against each other in a massive pyrotechnics display. Their stories are really diverse, but their passion for fireworks is the same. Well, I've had a, a passion for fireworks um, ever since I was quite young. And my father is a chartered accountant by background, so he's run some fairly decent sized businesses. And I'd always planned to be an accountant, do what dad did. So he encouraged me to have a little hobby business. It would teach me to talk to people, sell myself, and give me an overall feel and some skills for later life. Um, so in April of 2000, the Easter school holidays, we ducked over to China and uh, went to fireworks factories, uh, which at the time, um, it was pretty, you know, a bit of a change of pace from sunny old Brisbane to go to the, the backwaters of China to go and find fireworks. Um, and, and I started importing fireworks and I slowly got to know other people in the industry through selling fireworks. The fireworks are packed, 
primed and waiting to float into Southbank and send off 2011 with a bang. Tomorrow night we're going to release five tonnes of fireworks across the two displays and just over 50,000 individual pyrotechnic effects. Now uh, we, do, we do it all from the very small, so we're going to do a wedding on a Saturday night, um, and then the next night we might be at South Bank in front of 50,000 people. You know, we look after New Year's Eve currently in Australia at South Bank. Uh, we've been lucky to do so over the last four years. Um, so, you know, and everything in between. Um, I used to go to South Bank for many years ago and watch other companies at South Bank just wishing and praying for the day that I could be given an opportunity to put on a, a fire display in the city that I grew up in. And that was a, certainly a great privilege and honour to be able to um, to fire big displays there. So Nick, I think that on the Gold Coast, you know, we're going to have a pretty broad demographic. There's going to be everyone from you know, young families right through. Well, it, it all starts from literally a bit of a theme. So, and, and from the theme comes a soundtrack, and from the soundtrack, well, that dictates what fireworks are appropriate and will look best. Um, and, you know, we have our own slant on choreography. Everyone's very personal. It's like an, any artist. You could ask any artist to go and paint a, a beautiful landscape of a lake and rolling hills, and everyone's going to come back with something different. So, you know, we've all got little surprises tucked up our sleeves that we'll see on the night. But, um, yeah, it all starts from those early moments of theme creation, soundtrack, and then that will decide what fireworks are appropriate. Effect over the top. First display was a my own party actually. Uh, I had a party and I had actually fireworks at the party and somebody come in and and that's how it all sort of started. I We had fireworks letting off in, in the backyard sort of thing back then. It was a big property and uh, that's how I virtually started and I thought, oh, you know, I think this is some, somewhere I want to go. We do displays all over Australia. We're licensed in every state of Australia. Uh, we do anything from uh, funerals, believe it or not, or funerals right through to weddings, uh, school fates, product launches, do a lot of stage, we do a lot of special effects sort of stuff like flames. 90% of the reason why I'm in this industry is you do a good display and, and you get the, the clap or the cheer or the yell or the at the end of the night and it's and you know you just feel you feel like a rock star sort of thing so it's pretty sort of special you know i please those people and they're happy so you know you feel like oh excellent so that's probably the most gratifying thing about doing the the, the job is the crowd's reaction at the end of the night i have one seafire once so that was gratifying that year knowing that it was voted by the public um, and I got the most votes, so it was gratifying knowing that they enjoyed all the work we put into to doing the display. The fireworks industry is very, very competitive. Um, everybody wants to know what everybody's doing all the time. But um, oh, we just we just try and you know just try and do something a little bit different in every display. Try and you know whether it be because we've all got access to the same sorts of product because we're all buying them from a wholesaler. But trying to maybe change an angle or, you know, uh, put something a different way on, on, on a barge or, you know, just trying to change something up to give it some sort of different effect. Probably my earliest memories of fireworks would be sitting in the stands at the, the Brisbane exhibition and sort of just watching everything happening there, but not watching what the fireworks were doing, but watching what the, you know, the, the fireworks operators were doing and what they were doing next and uh, not too much what was happening up in the sky, but what they were, what they were doing. Um, I just saw an opportunity to, to go down the, the fireworks line and go, right, let's sort of create a, a, a career out of this and, and really have some fun with it and hopefully make a difference. We were sort of thrown in the deep end initially. We probably did one of the, the largest um, displays on the Gold Coast ever, and that was for uh, what they called the Bartercard Blast back in the day. Um, so we had a really sort of sharp learning curve, which helped us greatly because then, you know, we were able to sort of um, see, you know, how it all sort of evolved and then sort of what we could take from that sort of that learning curve. One of the hardest things for us is, you know, not having a social life. We sort of don't get to celebrate New Year's Eve. We don't get to celebrate most of the, 
um, major sort of dates throughout the year, like Australia Day we're working, New Year's Eve we're working. There's just so much there that just sort of limits us from sort of living a normal life. It's a, it's a great life, you know, but that's just one part of it we miss out on. Fireworks guys have really got large egos, they really do. And um, to be able to put three, you know, of Queensland's major fireworks companies in one arena and then let them sort of do a battle of the uh, battle of the egos, we may as well say, um, and they get to show off what they can do and what we can do, but to, a, um, uh, to an audience that will sort of be able to judge that and then to be able to, um, you know, at the end of the night, you know, um, let us know who was the best out of the best. Today, Chris is going to collect the fireworks for the unique pyrotechnic competition happening at Surfers Paradise. In Queensland, fireworks are kept under guard on a property outside the city. The laws that dictate the use of fireworks and explosives are extensive. Fireworks businesses are bound to these laws designed to limit tragedies. So we're about three days out from the event now, so it's getting pretty close, it's getting really exciting. Um, so we're at the uh, explosives uh, reserve, which is it in uh, Helladon, just outside, about an hour outside Brisbane. Uh, the idea of the, this explosive reserve is run by the government, so it's controlled very, very tightly by the authorities. So we, this is where we keep all, all the fireworks. Um, it's classed as an explosive, so it comes under the explosive regulations. So very tightly managed. A lot of the footage from um, overseas, where it's sort of in China and, and Amsterdam, where it's just taken out sort of city blocks because of illegal storage. A lot of people think that fireworks are, are stored in the back shed of people's home, or you know operators' homes or underneath their houses or in industrial sheds, where they're not. It's sort of tightly regulated uh, the industry where we can sort of store explosives. So up here at the explosive reserve, um, everything's really well sort of stored. The number of people holding fireworks licences is believed to have doubled in just two years. The dramatic rise follows the introduction of short courses to get a licence. It's those courses that are now under fire in the wake of Saturday's tragedy. Three tests on one type of Roman candle at the state government blasting range at Helladon today mark the start of an inquest into the 11-year-old's death. Close to 100,000 people are expected to enjoy the fireworks at Southbank. But don't be tempted to run your own display at home. Historically, our main problems are uh, the possession of illegal fireworks. They can uh, remove limbs and remove eyes and, as I said before, cause fatalities. We've seen some uh, devastating injuries um, in, in relation to the use of fireworks with kids and even adults using these uh, fireworks illegally with the loss of eyes, also fingers, uh, and um, very badly um, burned. The reserve is used as a government disposal area for explosives that are picked up in the community in relation to marine flares, ammunition um, and also explosives from the industry uh, can also be destroyed here. Part of the um, inspectorate's duties or obligations is to keep the community free and safe from explosives. And there's also um, a carton of red crissettes, as well as uh, a carton of the brocade candles. Next thing we have to do is go through and prep all the fireworks, waterproof it, um, yeah, and then we're just one step closer to event day. So we've been looking really closely at the uh, forecasts over the next few days. Uh, we're still a few days out and they sort of really can't get it spot on. So we're hoping there's a little bit of error there, but we're looking at, sort of, again, at high seas, probably around about the two metres. So again, it's going to be lumpy, uh, it's going to be rough, but it'll, it'll definitely work. As the competition gets close, the guys prepare the fireworks to transport to the Gold Coast. It's about this time the first wave of nerves kick in. Always nervous, always on the edge till, till the first shot goes off. Once the first shot goes off, it's like 
a relief or a bit of a ah, it's 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 started because once it started with all the programming and pre stuff we do on the computer, once it started, you know it's gonna go from there. But it's till that first shot goes off, it's it's very nerve wracking and. I appreciate having the other boys around because they're a very calming influence, you know. Always giving you, saying you can't do much else, you've done everything, you've done everything right, so just relax. Eighty percent or more of the work occurs before you leave the factory, before you leave the workshop, before you step out of the office. Um, you know, to to do it justice and to do it well, the real magic is happening behind the scenes. And while we might arrive in an event and set up, uh, and that might be a few days before for very very large displays or early in the morning of a display, people might just see that happening, and they might just see a, a small number of staff and think that's all it creates but it's so much more than that. Yep. All right. We're just over 48 hours away from showtime. We've done everything we can behind the scenes. The weather's looking really good now, but we're just hoping, fingers crossed, that it holds for Saturday night. In just 36 hours, the surface paradise sky will light up. The pyros have a busy time ahead of them as they prepare the explosives for the show. They will all work together to get the job done, but make no mistake, this is a competition. You know, we're well underway. I think what we're probably, our plan of attack is, I reckon, to get those barges done up as quick, not, not as quick as we can, but by the end of the day, if we can have all those so we can tarp them up, and then we'll put security on them overnight. So I think it's all it's sort of really going on plan at the moment. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I think if we get it all loaded here, um, secure it, get it on the barge, we'll connect it all, we'll do a system test, make yeah. sure everything's talking. Um, all the continuity is there. Yeah. Tarp it down, like you say, batten down the hatches, and then tomorrow we can do another safety check yep. um, and ready for setting sail. All right. And probably one of the most other important things would be that uh, we've got an inspector coming through, Lee Hayter from the Explosion okay. Inspector. He's here at 1.30. Uh, oh, 1.30. Okay. 1.30. We'll, we'll probably we'll pretty much be done by then. Most well, after the last couple of months we've had with the weather, if we can just Have cross our fingers for another 24 hours, we'll be almost home. Yeah. the erosion over the last few months. So that's forced us to go out into the into the ocean on barges, but I really think it's going to be just a huge benefit of that. Yeah, look, the festival is um, is very important to the Gold Coast economy and to particularly to our traders in Surface Paradise. So we've activated this over four weekends of food, art, music, entertainment, primarily to attract people. What it does is, is bring people together to really come together as a community to take some pride in what's being produced because half the people on the beach are residents and the other half are holiday makers. And so they're standing back saying, just have a look at what we can do. And I think it's that, that sense of community that comes as a consequence of that. Uh, C5 was something that we started last year as the fireworks challenge. And this year, because of some of the erosion on the beach, we've actually placed it offshore with, in, in, in terms of working with Chris Corby. Um, and just, we had fireworks off the shore for the opening ceremony. It was spectacular. 
It's like looking into a big dark chasm and all of a sudden the sky is painted with, with all these fireworks. It's just, it, it's brilliant. And yes, there's always a bit of nerves about the weather beforehand. So uh, he's out there in, with the barge and he's the man at risk, not us. We're all sitting on the beach enjoying ourselves. Oh, the conditions we've got at the moment are glorious. You know, we couldn't ask for anything better. But as I said, we are in Queensland, things could change. The weather's been such a thorn in our side for the last few months. We've had everything. We've had, we've had rain, we've had wind, we've had 2.5 metre swells, and today we're just blessed with this. Um, but hopefully, you know, we'll sort of keep these conditions for the next 24 hours. Getting the fireworks onto the barges is hard work, and at the back of their minds, they know the inspection will happen soon. Once everyone's set up, we'll all do an individual test, make sure everything's talking, um, and at that point we can just put all the tarps on, batten down the hatches for the night. You guys working with his safety management system? Oh, theoretically, in each of our individual setups, yeah. we would work to our, uh, our own system, but as an overall project, certainly um, once it, once it know. gets out the front there, then it's it's under yeah. it's under me. Okay. So I'm sort of I'm driving the boat or steering the ship yeah. from the time that these guys are set up and ready to go. Yeah. So uh, with the the transport side of it, with yeah everything, it's, it's under mine. Fireworks, you know, it falls under the banner of explosives. So it's you know obviously safety is paramount, first, second, third, um, and with that comes you know, red tape like a lot of businesses. Um, you know, we have a license to use it, a license to store it, a license to transport it, a license to import it, um, you know, and that's in every state. Now things are change a lot, like all the fireworks that you purchase are, have all got to be um, tested and, and so and there's all distant, proper distances and that before we just run under one banner with Australian standards and now like Queensland's got its own code, West Australia's got its own code, so there's a lot more regulations and guidelines we've got to abide by now. And a risk assessment. That's your risk assessment. And then that's, that's a full fire. We get on pretty well with the inspector. I mean, they're only human beings at the end of the day. They've got a job just like us, so we, we treat them with respect and they treat us with respect. So um, I just brought up a couple of little things, uh, a couple of little minor, minor things that we, we've not forgot to do that we sort of overlooked so um, but yeah I think he was pretty happy in the end so it was all good. We've had a massive day um, running a little bit behind as you always do when you're working with barges and stuff on water because tides and everything else. It's been a very beautiful day I hope it's like this tomorrow so the crowds are big to watch our displays tomorrow night. We might not show it but you know we're out there putting things in and their eyes are wandering onto onto the, the competition's display or Max or Chris's display and think, oh, he's done it like that, has he, you know? And, and we sort of just think, oh yeah, well, that's all right. <laughs> and I think when the barges actually set sail, like going on a trip, when you're actually on the boat and you've left port sort of thing, that's when there'll be a few little butterflies in the stomach and everything, and uh, they, won't, they won't go till uh, I think the first shot goes off, so tomorrow night. We're now getting towards the end of the journey, so we physically can't do much more. Tomorrow we're going to do some safety checks, but other than that, um, we'll wait to fire time. Hopefully the weather will hold as it is now, and uh, wait to pull the trigger. It's the day of the competition. The barges are nearly ready to go. The pyros can control everything except the weather and the waves. So we've got the water shells to do, cakes are secure, half of the cakes secure, we can plug those into the module. Um, yeah, then we'll just have a quick look to see what's going on after that. But the main objective is just to get all that tied down and we can just keep going with it. Easy. We've got about four hours to do it. Yep. 
Yeah. Firing time roughly 12 hours away. So we're getting really close. Just the finishing touches here now. Um, the other guys finished up yesterday. We sort of had a bit of a late night. We finished here last night about midnight. Um, and then I was back here again at seven o'clock this morning. But it, we've just got so many other things happening at the same time. Oh, I was a little bit sort of um, disappointed just to see how big the surf was this morning compared to yesterday. Yeah, I was sort of like counting the chickens before they had just by seeing how good it was. And then today, a bit disappointed about how far the, the breakers are actually breaking. So it means that the, the barge is going to be a little bit further out than I would have liked for it to be really effective. I was out there before and noticed that it was incoming tide, incoming waves, and it was pretty flat mm. until we get out around the corner. Oh, yeah, but it's dropping off now, the wind, and then the front of surface will be blowing straight onto the beach, so uh, yeah. that'll make pretty condition, good conditions for you guys. So you reckon we'll also too just keep up the, keep the way we did it last week, you know, just keep it on the... Yeah, we'll you just know, idle around and keep it up into the conditions, and then you'll have the beach behind you and all the people perfect. waiting. Perfect, and perfect. Then, so time-wise, how do you think, what are we going to look at like from the time that we leave the seaway, but because of the, the amount of swell, you know, like we're punching into that swell? Well, there's not that much out there now. Um, we'll be half an hour from the seaway until we get down to in front of surface paradise. We're just over 400 metres out at the moment, so ideally it would be nice to be a bit closer. Uh, but just with the tides and the big swells that we've got tonight, they're, they're bigger than we were predicting yesterday. So with that, we're a little bit further than we would like, but we're hoping to creep forward as the tides rise. As long as the barges are poking into the swell, they'll, they'll ride it out. It's only if we're sort of broadsiding that we'll end up heading trouble. What they're doing at the moment, they're doing is battling with the wind. Uh, fairly windy, so the, the barges aren't lining up perfectly the way that I've sort of designed the shows. It's really good. It's starting to uh, really fill up here, and uh, yeah, and that adds to the nerves of the night because you know you you want to impress as many people as you can. So the more people here, the better it is. Okay, we're probably about uh, half away, half an hour away from fire time, but I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you a ten-minute heads up, and then I'll give you a five-minute heads up. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen, for coming down tonight. A big thanks to Service Paradise Alliance, of course, CFM and the Gold Coast Bullets, and bringing you Sea Fire. Uh, the guys are out there on those barges out there. Uh, they are ready to uh, light the sky up. <laughs>
That was absolutely spectacular, just what we expected, and it was just a great outcome with the large crowds we saw on the beach. It was just fantastic. With the event over, the crowd have made their decision. The winner tonight at Sydney Fire here 2013, Spectrum! We've been here for uh, yeah, a long time on the beach, doing New Year's Eves especially. And I reckon that was bigger than some of the New Year's Eve crowds we get down here. So to have a, um, a crowd that is so appreciative of what we've done, and it just makes all the extra work that we've done to make the event happen worthwhile. Job satisfaction at the end, like now, as we stand here, knowing that I still have to clean up, but as I stand here now, it's just, yeah, it's a great feeling. That's the most pleasing thing at the end of the day, seeing everybody cheer and makes you, you know, pump your chest out a bit because you're happy that you've pleased people. So, no, it was good. Oh, yeah, it was a good night all up. We were really happy with how it went. Um, pretty much how we scripted it was how it fired. Um, a couple little things to take note of, but, but really happy. Great audience, good feedback, so very happy.